Hello, everyone. For this podium discussion, we are joined by Mundia Mulabusa and also Denis Kayadalan. Mundia is senior management at EY and a professional figure athlete in the World Natural Bodybuilding Federation. She is also 2021 CNBF figure champion. Denise, in turn, is a talent management lead at EY Switzerland and the 2022 world champion in ice swimming, which makes her the first Turkish woman who became a world champion in ice swimming. So welcome, guys. It's so happy to host you here in Zurich. Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Great to be here. So let me start by addressing your wide range of commitments. Not only are you managers in UI, but also accomplished athletes. Can you maybe walk us through your background and tell us to what extent your diverse pursuits enrich your careers? Like sure, <laughs> shall I go first? <laughs> sure. So I'm originally from Zambia, uh, where I was born and raised in Lusaka. And uh, uh, about 20 years ago, I met my husband in Cape Town in South Africa. He's also, he's Swiss. And when we got married, we decided to move to Switzerland. And something that's always kept me along during this time is my love for physical fitness and looking after myself. And what I realized is when I joined the corporate world here, um, how I looked after my physical and mental being was so important because it helped me to cope with all of the demands that came up um, with regards to the job and the different responsibilities that came along as I developed in my career. So definitely my love for that um, physical and mental well-being has definitely enhanced my professional career as well. Yeah, maybe I can continue. Um, yeah, I born and uh, grew up in Germany, um, but my family comes from Turkey. And when I was 11, I moved uh, to Turkey. And for me, it, it was a massive challenge, a new culture, new language. Well, I had the feeling I lost all my bases. Uh, because, yeah, at least um, yeah, when you grow and have a specific culture, you are used to it. And then I started with swimming. And before, um, before that, uh, swimming was for me just a hobby beside other hobbies. But um, I felt home in the water, and it gave me so much strength. And um, I felt that uh, the, more, the more I achieved there um, something, uh, it helps me to deal with challenges, to put myself better in, into the typical new culture. And um, yeah, I, that became my passion at the end. It was hard to go to school and then uh, besides the work to continue. But I felt that uh, mental health and the balance is so important. And the more um, I felt comfortable in the water, the more I felt comfortable um, in new challenging situations also outside the, the water. And uh, yeah, so when I started with consulting, my first boss said, if you would like to become a real consultant, um, you can forget sport. You, you can. You need to just work hard, and you can't even sleep in the hardcore business consulting life. And then it, it was for me a massive uh, yeah, breakthrough moment because then I decided to say I would like to be a consultant. I would, would like to still be an athlete, and I would like to prove it myself and to other people that you can still follow your passion even if you are successful in your consulting or in business world. So being successful in sports also brought this aspect of believing in yourself, believing in your own capabilities and abilities, but it, can we say that? Absolutely, and because I think as human beings, we're multidimensional, right? Mm -hmm. We're only mm -hmm. just one thing. And sometimes when we attach ourselves typically to one identity, um, we, we kind of don't get the benefits of all the other things that we are capable of. So exploring your different dimensions and what it is that you feel that you're good at and that you want to pursue, is definitely going to enrich your, your life overall. So everything connects, right? Nothing you do is in vain and just stays in that one aspect of your life. Absolutely. Um, for our second question, I would like to address women's issues a bit. Uh, I'd like to ask what are the specific challenges women face in management, in consulting, but also in sports? And what do you think can help these women achieve their full potential despite all of these challenges? Because even you mentioned that your first boss told you that you can't do that, you can't do both of them, but you decided yeah. somehow yeah. that you can actually. Yeah. And tell you the truth, um, so the challenge starts also with your family. So um, everyone has a different expectation on you. So I think not just a man or woman, but as human being, so many you have so many different roles. 
Um, and especially when you are a woman, of course, your family um, also expects that you become a mother, you become your own family. And I think, Mundia, you are a great example. You are already a mother, yeah. you have your business and everything. And for me, in my case, I had massive issues with my mom, for example. Uh, when I became 30, she uh, was frustrated that I still don't have my family, I still don't have any uh, kid plans. And even now, um, she said to me this summer, oh, I don't care about your world championships and your swimming. So when you come with a real story, so the neighbors would like to hear that you have a <laughs> kid's plan and when is your marriage? And for me, it was so a massive moment where I thought, okay, so everyone has different expectations and you need to be, yeah, stand to yourself, to your own passion and believe that everything comes in the right moment, in the right stage. Um, otherwise, you become lost if you would like to um, yeah, answer all the expectations. And so I think we all as a woman, but also as a human being, need to stand for our passion for ourselves, what is important for us. And if we are in our authentic self, everything will flow in the right time. And then the family or other things, what is important for us will come automatically. If we just can stop thinking about what others think, what the neighbors think, and start helping ourselves and then helping others. Yeah. And maybe just to add on to what uh, Denise said, so I will answer the second part of your question first. You said, what can, what can we do to overcome these challenges? So I think, first of all, knowing what it is that you want is very key, because if you don't know what it is that you want, it's difficult to get the help that you need to get there. So firstly, knowing what it is that you want and what are your values, you know, what it is that, what do you stand for? What are the things that kind of guide the way you, you know, navigate through this earth and, and go about your tasks and your responsibilities and things like that? Because we are going to face challenges, I believe, on two levels. So the first level is internally. So facing your own inner critic and the doubt and limitations that you put on yourself, first of all. And then secondly comes all the other external challenges. So dealing on them on those two different levels, um, you know, not one is bigger than the other. It really depends on how you as a person deal with it. But I think once you really tackle the core, those issues that you face internally and your inner critic, um, that's already a big step ahead in facing all the other external challenges that come from outside because you have no control over the external challenges. You can only control what's happening within you. And so if you kind of start facing that, I found for me, when I kind of got to that point and thought, okay, face the challenges that are within you first, it really helps deal with everything else. That's true. And I also wanted to ask you about community, you know, work life, mm -hmm. because our colleagues are the people that we spend the most time with, right? They are our natural community. Mm -hmm. And how do you think they can contribute to this internal um, struggles mm -hmm. or how can they help? Sure. Or yeah. what, is, what is your experience in the EY? Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's really important to have a community, to have a work environment where you can still be yourself and yeah, also ask for help. And with an EY, for example, um, I, we, I, I think I feel the massive support from, from my managers, from my colleagues. When I have a um, competition, they say, okay, we will take care of your work, so don't worry about us. Um, and, and this is a real um, yeah, massive important topic. Mm -hmm. Also to be yourself, to be not afraid to say, oh, I have a training this um, evening, I need to go uh, earlier maybe. And uh, yeah, to be your authentic self. And mm -hmm. I think that's um, what EY really um, yeah, is successful in bringing it. Yeah. I would like to maybe add on to that as well. So I have this analogy, you know, when I'm going through something and how I see my, the support system that I have. And I have an internal support system at EY, so managers that I work with, partners and colleagues as well, and externally as well. And sometimes when you're not able to cope with something, you have to lean onto your network and your support system. And I think at EY, I've had such a tremendous amount of support with the, the people that I've met who I know I will be connected to even beyond the work environment. So there I can definitely say it's, it's so important to have that support and feel that once you have that support, you then feel you can bring your authentic self and that allows also the people around you to be authentic and then everybody thrives in such an environment. Now you are also creating an enabling space for everyone Absolutely. By, by being yourself. Mm -hmm. And of course the family support system, the friends, so mm -hmm. that's also important. So the success never comes from just one person, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the overall picture. But I think in order for others to support you, you should also be in a position to say, okay, I need help right now. Yeah. 
because it's not just women, it's not just young women, but I think many people struggle with the fact that, or not the fact, but um, the way people see others is that, okay, this person is perfect, this person is a world champion, this person is a civil champion, so they need to do everything perfectly, they need to be able to do everything perfectly. Uh, which brings me to my um, third question, um, which is failure. Because yeah. we've been talking about your accomplishments, which are amazing, I have to say. But what about failure? How, how do you deal with it? Yeah. I'll be glad to go first on this one because <laughs> failure is definitely part of, of the journey when you're going towards any success. So even when you embark on something, we have to think about the possible outcomes. Not everything always goes according to plan or in the trajectory in which you think it will. And you also need to have a plan B and realize even before you start off that failure is actually, or, or non-successes, I also like to call them that, it's part of the journey. And anything that I've learned so far is I've learned the most from my failures than from the areas where I succeeded. Because the next time when you attempt something, you're kind of armed with this experience and wisdom to, to hopefully do make the decisions that lead to a better outcome. So that's one thing personally. And then of course, once again, the support system. So I would tell a little story. For example, when you see um, a boxing match going on and the two opponents are going head to head and the round is over. And typically, you know, they go into the corner and they sit down and they have their arms up. And there's a whole team of people that swarm around them. And one is, you know, dabbing the sweat off the forehead. One is grabbing the mouth guard. And the coach is also whispering things into your ear, you know, to kind of get you going. And for me, when I feel that, for example, I failed and I'm not able to get myself out of that place, I rely on my support system. And it's like, I call it my corner team. So this is my family, my mentors within the firm, my mentors out of the firm some people who are my mentors, and they don't even know that they're my mentors, <laughs> but because I admire the way they carry themselves, their character, and how their words are aligned with their actions. So I kind of go to that support system because when we do get into that place of where we feel we've failed, sometimes you can't get out of it on your own. You need that support. So definitely have that support system as well. And yeah, that's why I kind of go to my corner team. And it's okay, right? It's okay that you can't always do everything perfect. Oh, absolutely. No, per perfection, I think, is quite uh, overrated because that's what sometimes stops us from doing things because we think we have to have it all figured out. And you don't. Sometimes you have to figure it out along the way. You just have to be brave enough to, to take the next step. And sometimes when you don't believe in yourself, you need other people to believe in you. Yeah, helps, so, yeah. definitely. And um, yeah, adding on that, I think we need to stop fear of failure. Mm -hmm. So failure is, is a natural process. So um, when I was in a competition uh, 15 years ago, uh, it was in the cold water, open water. After 40 minutes, I became hypothermia. I, I lost my mind. I, and I even didn't feel that I lost my mind, of course. And then I uh, ended up in a hospital. Um, and cold water became a fear, but uh, always my dream was to cross the English Channel, uh, yeah, to do much more in the open water space. And um, then I decided I'm more than my fear. We are all more than our fears. And I started to use the fear as an orientation point for my growth uh, process. So every fear shows us where we can yeah, go out of our comfort zone and grow and have one step more. And uh, at the end, I started with cold water showers, cold water trainings, step by step expanded my comfort zone and uh, yeah, crossed the English Channel as a relay team, but decided next year to do a solo and even became a world champion in ice swimming, which even I couldn't dream of. Um, and the same in business, for example, in the past, I couldn't do nice presentations. I failed in one presentation where my boss came to me and said, Denise, you are losing people, you are not structured enough. And for me, it was a massive failure because I, I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to perform well. I was in the business time. And then I had fear, of course, of present, presenting something. But then I used it again and learned from the feedback, learned from my failures and now um, I speak in front of hundreds of people. So I think we need to use those failures mm -hmm. and see it as a growth chance. And since you're a psychologist, you also have the know-how um, mm -hmm. on how to deal with those things. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about pain uh, in the same uh, similar lines, right? You said also pain is something natural. And what we can do is just to use it and transform it uh, into creativity instead of running away from it. Yeah.
Absolutely. Which we all face it in, in the, during the pandemic time as well. So we mm -hmm. all had different pains, right? But yeah, how, how we deal with that, how we transform it to creative energy. Yeah? Um, what did you do in the pandemics? So <laughs> now that we're on the topic. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, in, in, in lockdown in South Africa. Um, I was an, as an expat there. So UI mm -hmm. uh, offers many, many opportunities also worldwide. And then I was so frustrated, so in pain alone there out of my comfort zone. But then I tried to say, okay, so how can I transform this frustration into a positive creativity? And I started to write my book out of comfort zone. And yes, yeah, so at the end, um, that was my dream. So I think we all have all the time we can ask our questions if we feel pain, how we can learn from it or how we can transform it to another direction. And share it with people, right? You're not alone. Yes, definitely. Things. Absolutely. And maybe just to add to that point as well of sharing it with people as well. Sometimes we feel like we have to go through something alone because if we don't share or we might feel that maybe we're not strong enough or so. But there is a lot of power in vulnerability and sharing because you never know the amount of support that's going to come back to you once you you open up. So, yeah, okay. it's definitely key. It's amazing to hear these things from you, from world champions, from Swiss champions that, hey, you're also people. <laughs> <laughs> We are all vulnerable people. <laughs> um, so as a final question, I think our time is almost up. Um, I'd like to come back to EY and maybe connect our conversation to the bigger picture. Um, so what do you think is EY doing to create a more gender diverse or a more diverse in general um, work environment? And what do you think can be done across the board about it? Yep. Shall I go first in that one? So. I think within EY, we have tons of programs um, that support the employees in many, many different ways. For example, we have the support for the parents at EY program that supports both the male and female parents um, of uh, new, new parents and such programs as well as the EY Professional Women's Network that absolutely you know, brings a lot of different people together throughout the organization and from externally. So there are definitely networks that have programs in place that help people to get through the certain challenges. What's important when there's always such a network or initiatives or programs is that you customize it for your situation because everybody's situation is different at home with your hobbies or whatever it is that you like to do. So really take those programs and you know, within EY, there's so many that I have benefited from myself. Take it and then customize it to, to your situation so that you really feel that you can bring the best version of yourself, not only to work, but in everything that you do. Yeah. And um, yeah, as, as Mundi has said, we have different programs, flexible working times, flexible working locations. And I think, yeah, that, that should empower us as women uh, to realize our dreams. Uh, yeah, if it's um, yeah, taking care more of family, but also maybe taking care of, of your hobbies, of your passion. And um, yeah, there Eva is a good role model, I think, there. And many companies. Um, we see that they have also like departments, uh, DNI departments, and uh, doing many, many projects on that. And I think that's the best way to go forward. Um, and we also have questions from the chat from Slido. Um, one of our audiences wants to know uh, how do you find the time to do your sports? And how many hours do you sleep, <laughs> <laughs> work, train, or relax each day? And what is the best way to manage time? Okay, I, I will respond to, to this one first. So this is a question I get asked often and I always say that, um, two things. So if you wanna make time for things outside of your typical responsibilities, you have to decide what your priorities are. So personally, what I do, I always say is, what are you doing between five and seven in the morning or between eight and 10 in the night? Because <laughs> you have those two hours kind of during the day to decide. So either you're, you choose the time to either relax with friends, which is great, you know, or relax at home. But for example, if you can make time just two days or three days out of the week for that, um, you can prioritize that. And also on the weekend as well, depending if you have a job where you have to work on the weekend or shift work, but really prioritize your own uh, physical and mental well-being. Because when you take part in some kind of sport activity, you're not only making yourself improve in some way, you're also being able to show up better for the people around you because physically you will feel good and mentally you'll feel good because doing some kind of physical activity has that 
physiological impact on your body. You feel good, the endorphins are flowing, you feel great, you just wanna, you feel like you can do anything basically. <laughs> <laughs> and so really just take the time for that and it doesn't need to be hours in a day, even 30 minutes, even 10 minutes, if you only have 10 minutes to do it and you will definitely feel the benefit. So make it a priority. Yeah, yeah I, I think it should be like sleeping, like eating, doing sports. So it's for me like this. So if I don't eat, sleep and don't train, then I'm not in balance. So uh, as Mundia said, half an hour a day is even enough mm -hmm. um, if you do it really in a disciplined way. And mm -hmm. the regeneration time is also, of course, important. So mm -hmm. sleeping and Definitely. having time for yourself. <laughs> Um, okay, we don't have any other questions, so I'll just close. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, for sharing your experience, your insights, and motivating us to be a better version of ourselves, to be the authentic versions of ourselves. And now for our next interview, we are connecting to Vienna, to our editor-in-chief, Klaus, and he will be interviewing Engessa. Thank you. Thank you.